Hey guys, I'm Daddy, but you can call me Church. Welcome back to the Church on Monday podcast, the podcast where I talk at you about shit I like. I want to start off this week's episode with a new segment that's kind of thematically tied to this week's topic, at least superficially, and that new segment is called Pillars of the Earth Update Corner. It's a Pillars of the Earth 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 Update update Corner. It's the corner where we update you on my my progress. progress. On Pillars of the Earth. I haven't gotten much farther. And that was the Pillars of the Earth Update Corner. Alright, so this week I actually watched Neon Genesis Evangelion. Well, maybe not technically. Um, A lot of purists are going to probably bitch me out in the comments because I have not seen the full series and then the movie, The End of Evangelion. I'm actually just watching the remake movies. And I watched all three of them this week. And... The lore and symbolism in this story is fucking dense. I was not expecting it, you know? The premise is about giant mechs fighting giant monsters called angels. And, you know, everybody always says, you know, that's not at all what it's actually about. But fuck, man, it is very quickly not at all about that. But before we get into that, I neglected to talk about this night's drink selection. So, this evening, I am drinking a rum and coke, um, specifically with the McDonald's vintage coke. Most agree that it has a superior taste and mouthfeel to any other selection, Uh, and I'm pulling directly out of a handle of Captain Morgan. So that is the drink choice this evening, if you would like to drink along. Now back to Evangelion. Now, I'm mostly going to be talking about some interesting themes that I've noticed in this series so far, but I might be spoiling some specific plot points. So... Here is your spoiler warning. However, because there are only three parts of four out for the movie, I have obviously not seen the ending of this series. And I plan to actually watch through the anime and the end of Evangelion movie sometime soon so I can go more in depth. So this is part one of at least a two-parter. So the first movie starts by introducing us to the post-apocalyptic world of Tokyo 3, where due to an incident with the angels previously, people are forced to basically live underground. The city will retract down into a geodome, is what they call it, which is like an underground environment that they've built to house the structures during an angel attack. And, you know, you kind of get a few glimpses of the critique of Christianity and its toxic repression of sexuality in this first movie, you know, um... Masato's necklace is a cross, and obviously the monsters are called angels in this series. And it's honestly quite uncomfortable, you know. The angels are full of phallic and vaginal imagery, and the main character is a 14-year-old boy, so he's just going through puberty and experiencing new sexual feelings and it's expressed outwardly 
in the story. And the reason he's 14 is because for some reason you need to be 14 to pilot the Avas. Again, I have a very incomplete view of this story because I, ha I don't have all the answers to what's literally going on. So speculating on the figurative messages might might not be entirely accurate. So if anyone has non-spoiler information to give me to clarify my understanding of the themes and the symbolism, go ahead and comment that down below. I would love to have a discussion about this and have a greater insight because I do find it fascinating so far and I am very excited to consume the entire product and have an idea of what the fuck is happening here because luckily Shinji, our main character, is also very confused by everything. He's he's a kid. He doesn't know what the hell Nerve is trying to do. He knows that there are giant monsters called angels and there are giant robots called Avas and that's how Nerve protects humanity at this point. But he doesn't understand that there's this massive religious conspiracy, some ritual that he's been thrust into by his father who runs this secret defense organization. He doesn't understand that there are these forces in the world. And it's, it's really interesting in terms of Shinji because the story is happening to him. He has very little agency in what's going on. And when he actually takes agency and he makes a massive decision on his own and he decides he's not going to be part of this shit anymore, it's catastrophic. And it, in fact, just plays further into the forces that have been propelling him forward to a predestined, pre-planned conclusion. And it's very strange for a passive protagonist to be so interesting, because it seems to be about Christianity's effect on children, and how they are the ones who are being manipulated and repressed and encouraged to never grow up and actually engage with humanity on a common level. There's a part in the third film where it has been 14 years later, but all of the Ava pilots who had to be 14 when they were able to pilot the Avas, all still look 14. And instantly I was like, that's an expression of how Christianity encourages eternal adolescence. It's how at least our society now views being cute and innocent as the pinnacle of human purity, which is just obscene and honestly ruins a lot of people's healthy relationships, healthy self-esteem, and I think this is an interesting way to critique that because they're all kind of pissed. They call it uh, the Ava's curse that they're all still so young, and that is kind of what it is. So I guess I should kind of discuss my relationship with Christianity and growing up. So, my mother was actually Episcopalian, which is a denomination famously accepting of other views and such, but I was the only child going to the church, so I actually went to Sunday school and confirmation class at the Lutheran church just across town, and I was never a believer growing up. I never even really 
considered it. I was just a very curious kid who asked a lot of questions and came to a lot of conclusions very early. So I read the Bible many times growing up and I knew well that it wasn't factual and it was very unconvincing to me. So I was never really a believer, maybe in my distant youth, <laughs> but really it was never a concern for me in my life. It was never so instilled in me that I had a crisis of faith and it broke my family apart like it can to so many who are just indoctrinated for so long. But because of this, I never had a repressed view of sexuality drilled into me. My dad was kind of an agnostic, and so he raised me that way, so I had an outlet for these feelings of non-faith. I don't think he even ever went to church with my mother and I. And so it, it was just not a big deal for me. And so when I went through my shockingly quick transition from a pudgy 11-year-old to a muscular, satin-voiced 12-year-old, I didn't have any internalized repression of sexuality. So it was a very smooth transition. You know, I experimented and moved on, and it was no significant deal in my life. But when I got to high school, I was a sophomore at 15. I started dating this 18-year-old girl who was raised as a Catholic. And we dated for, you know, two years, and it was, you know, a high school relationship. But she was in college for most of it, but she was repressed and, you know, kind of childlike in a lot of ways uh, that I had to really push her to help her get over. And, you know, she was afraid for me because she loved me and she didn't want to see me burning in hell. We've had, we had all of the conversations and she actively suffered from being raised with these ideas. She had severe OCD. She had depressive episodes about sins and about my eternal soul. And it was just torturous to her. She was like Shinji. She had no agency in the forces working in her life. And so it's unsettling for me to see these so accurately conveyed symbolically in this series. It's fascinating that they're able to do that with this honestly absurd story. It's fucking crazy. But um, I'm really enjoying it from what I've seen. I'm sure the uh, anime will have new details that I did not encounter in these movies. And obviously it has the full story. So um, I think I'm gonna watch through that and talk about it Probably not next time. You know, I just watched all of these. I don't want to binge everything all over again. But, you know, maybe in a couple weeks or next month, I will do that. And I'll talk about it on an episode of Church on Monday. But for now, I hope that has piqued your interest in the series. Or if you've seen the series and I'm getting something wrong or you have a different take... I'd love to have a discussion in the comments down below. Also, you can reach me at its underscore just underscore church on both Twitter and Instagram. Or you can email me at churchonmondaypod at gmail.com. Hope you have a fantastic week. We will see you next time. Love ya. Bye. No. Tears don't 
fuck with more yet Take what you can get You're not my girlfriend 